Amen. Whew. It's been a happening week, right? <laughs> we had the uh, renegade game on Friday night. We had the grief share picnic yesterday. And here we are today, gathered at the Lord's table. Amen. Oh, it's so good to see you back. <laughs> I rejoice in your being here today. Amen. Amen. We have faced situations that leave us with fear, leave us with uncertainty. We've cer certainly had our share <laughs> of issues lately, haven't we? Sometimes we don't know how to respond because our situation seems impossible. Hmm. But God works in ways we cannot see. And he will make a way. Amen? He will make a way. If we do life with him, <laughs> if our trust in him continues to grow, He's going to compel us. Amen? He's going to draw us close. He's going to be all that we have need of. We're going to be in 2 Chronicles 20. I don't know, but I've been drawn to the battle scenes of the scriptures lately. Amen. I don't know. It seems like we've been on the battlefront, right? Yeah, we're there. Amen. We're going to look at a valley of blessing. <laughs> There's blessings in the valley, amen? $17.99, now I know you weren't around then. <laughs> Easter morning in Feldrick, Austria. It was Easter morning, they, all the people shook in fear, thinking it would be the worst Easter ever. The worst Easter ever for me was 2020. But there, here they were, Napoleon and his army were outside the city. <laughs> they wanted to come in those gates. They wanted to come in and take over. Some of them were ready to wave the white flag and surrender to Napoleon. And then there was a bishop from the church who said, wait a minute, wait a minute, this is Easter, and I think we should have at least one victorious moment before the enemy comes in. <laughs> they listened, <laughs> believe it or not, they kept the white flags down. They said, we're going to play the song <laughs> of victory. For this is the day that our king resurrected from the dead, and we're going to rejoice for at least one or two minutes. So they, the organ began to play. They began to praise. Napoleon outside with the army wondered what in the world this was. What was going on? <laughs> Didn't they know we were here? <laughs> Didn't the ring tell them we were on their porch, <laughs> right? And, and they were like, what is going on? Well, they thought, oh, no, the Austrian army must have rallied and come in in the night, and they're going to defeat us. And so before the song was even over, they were dispersing. Well, we have a similar account right here in Scripture in 2 Chronicles chapter 20. God's people find themselves in an impossible situation. <laughs> Been there? Done that? <laughs> right? Then they don't know what to do. <laughs> they know they don't have the strength themselves, just like that army, just like the people in Frederick. They don't know how to respond. Their situation is impossible, but God works in ways we cannot see. Amen? He will make a way. If we do life with him, 
if we put our trust in him, and sometimes we say like the, the man who brought his son to Jesus, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. <laughs> sometimes we come to the Lord and we say, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes when we go through difficulties, as in Sunday school, let me put a plug in there, 9.30 Sunday mornings, they're in the book of Job today. Amen. There's a man who had some trouble. <laughs> yeah. They don't have these people here in Judah. They, Jerusalem, they do not have the power of themselves. They follow their king's lead, and they cry out to God. <laughs> oh, church, we need to cry out to God. We face these uncertain situations. Fear creeps up. seems impossible, but God works. God works. God is at work. Amen? He will answer us. He will help us. He will help us. Let's look at the story. We're going to read it together as it unfolds throughout the message, so you'll want to keep it open there. All right? Beginning with verse 1, we'll read 1 through 5. It says, After this, the Moabites and Ammonites and some of the Menuhites came to wage war against Jehoshaphat. I like that name, Jehoshaphat. Some people came and told Jehoshaphat, a vast army is coming against you from Edom and the other side of the Dead Sea. It's al it is already in Hezazan Tamar, that is, and Gedi. Alarmed, Jehoshaphat resolved to inquire of the Lord, and he proclaimed a fast for all Judah. People of Judah came together to seek help from the Lord. Indeed, they came from every town in Judah to seek him. Lord Jesus, we need you. We need you, oh God, how we need you. Lord, we pray for each of our students. Lord, we pray for Easton, for Ari, Lord. For Lena and Landon and Lamont, Lord. For each and every child who calls this their church, Lord, we pray that you would be with them as they go to school. Be with Sidus, Dad, we pray, and bring healing, Lord, and hope to him, we ask. We pray, O oh God, that today as we have gathered around your word, that your word would sink deep into our hearts and our minds. O oh Lord God, that you would stir us to pray. That you would stir us, God, to be in your house. That you would stir us, Lord, to draw near to you. For, Lord, this is too great for us. But, Lord, we look to you who moves in ways we cannot see. Oh, Lord God, move in our situation, we pray. We put our trust in you. We put our hope in you. We put our faith, oh God, in you. We are depending upon you to see us through. Lord, we ask that your will would be done this day as we draw near and sit at your table, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen. So the threat from the enemy comes. <laughs> he comes knocking at the door. <laughs> the enemy was already in the land of Judah, we're told. They're getting closer and closer to the stronghold of Jerusalem. Second Chronicles 20. That's okay. There we go. <laughs> King Jehoshaphat is living in Jerusalem, the capital city of Judah. But they're coming. The threat was real. 
It wasn't just something that was made up. The threat was real. The enemy was in their territory. War had been declared. The troops were already marching. They're miles, just miles, a day's journey from Jehoshaphat, from the capital city of Jerusalem, the place where the temple of the Lord was. One day away, not much warning. They're coming. If we look at our situation this morning, (laughs) as people of God, the enemy is in our land. He's closing in every day. He's wrecked families. He's destroyed faith. He's attacked relationships. He's attacked our health, our finances. He's assaulted our confidence. He's left us feeling weak and ineffective. He's messed with our unity. He's messed with our commitment to to God. He's trying to turn us one against another. What a time of division within the church and without. They're not getting vaccinated. They don't wear masks, blah, 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 on and on. Everyone's strong of feelings because of the fear that the enemy has put there. We see our unity being destroyed, our commitment to the Lord and his house being destroyed. He's thrown every distraction possible so we won't have a chance to stop and realize who we are in Christ. I am who he says I am. Amen? I am. We've dealt with sickness. There are those that are worried about their jobs. There are government issues. There's nations at war. Things are going on that shouldn't be going on. And he's attacking on every front. Not only all that, but our culture itself that now says good is evil and evil is good. (laughs) And if we stand for God's good which is the only good there is. <laughs> We're call, we are called names. <laughs> We're extremists. We're completely out of touch. The enemy is in our land, church. And it's no small campaign. Mm-mm. He's using every weapon in his arsenal to get us. Every single weapon he has, every form of enticement he can come up with to drag us away. He's got even God's people in panic, confusion, complacency. That's where we are. 2021. This is where we are. The enemy is in our land. And if you don't feel that you're under attack right now, hold on. (laughs) It's coming. It's coming. He's in our land. He wants you. And the enemy of our soul doesn't want to just give us a bad day. We all have bad days from now and then, right? No, John 10, 10 tells us he comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. He wants to take us out and not for dinner. He wants to take us out. He wants to. So what are we going to do about it? Yeah. Are we going to try and fight him ourselves? We'll be in trouble. No matter what resources you have, what energy you have, some of you are thinking, well, I'm going to (laughs) surrender. Get the white flag ready. (laughs) Maybe you're just hoping he's going to go away and leave us alone. (laughs) I wouldn't count on it. (laughs) Look how the king responds there. (laughs) Look how he responds there. When he hears the enemy's coming. What's he say? Verse 6. I 
don't know if I read five. Then Jehoshaphat stood up in the assembly of Judah and Jerusalem at the temple of the Lord in front of the new courtyard and said, Lord, the God of our ancestors, are you not the God who is in heaven? You rule over all the kingdoms of the nations. Power and might are in your hand, and no one can withstand you. Our God, did you not drive out the inhabitants of this land before your people Israel and gave it forever to the descendants of Abraham, your friend? They have li lived in it and have built in it a sanctuary for your name, saying if calamity comes upon us, whether the sword of judgment or the plague or famine, we will stand in your presence before this temple that bears your name and will cry out to you in our distress, and you will hear us and save us. Verse 10 but now here are men from Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, whose territory you would not allow Israel to invade when they came from Egypt. So they turned away from them and did not destroy them. See how they are repaying us? <laughs> by coming to drive us out of the possession that you gave us as an inheritance. Our God, will you not judge them? For we have no power to face this vast army that is attacking us. We do not know what to do, but our eyes are on you. Our eyes are on you. Jehoshaphat's response might be the same as ours. He's alarmed. <laughs> oh, 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 the enemy's here. But he didn't allow fear to immobilize him. He jumps right to it. He gathers the people together. He did the right thing. And he seeks the face of the Lord for guidance. He didn't act alone either. He called everyone to seek the Lord and to fast. Oh, pastor, we don't like that word. Surely we're past that. <laughs> Fasting seems to be out of style, but guess what? It's God's way. It works, amen. Takes down the strongholds in your life, amen. You can see it many, many times in the scripture where God's people fast. They fast. God told them to fast. Fast is going without food. <laughs> Some of them even went without water. They didn't have a TV then, but I suppose that could be a fast. But there is something that happens when we tell the Lord, you're more important to me than what I put before me on the table. What I ingest, Lord, help me ingest you, right? I wouldn't say that it's leverage with God. It's not like we get an in, a special in, but we do get his attention. Yeah. Fasting shows something that we recognize our need for God's help. And it doesn't come from a hamburger or a pizza. God's strength comes from God. Amen? More than we need another meal, we need to draw near to him. Mm. To prayer. I love this prayer, don't you? It focuses on God first and foremost. He turns his eyes from the trouble to his God. Amen? His focus is on him. It restores a balance when we turn our eyes upon God. Because <laughs> our troubles seem insurmountable. They seem overwhelming to us. But when our eyes are on God, he is much bigger than any problem we have today, any problem we're going to face tomorrow. He is bigger. Our God is greater and he is mighty to save. Amen? So first of all, he turns his attention to God. He said, Lord, the God of our ancestors, are you not the God who is in heaven? <laughs> Verse 7 says, didn't you? <laughs> he said, 
our God, did you not drive out the inhabitants of this land? Wasn't that you, God? <laughs> right? Well, yeah, he's, not just, he's not just reminding God. God knows who he is. God has no identity crisis. He is reminding himself, you're the one who set your people free. You are the one. What has God done for you in the past? Think about that. All he's done for us in the past, we, God wants to build upon that. Amen? Remind yourself of that, how he was bigger than that sickness. He was bigger than that fever. He was bigger. He was greater. He was victorious in our lives. In verse 12, he says, and will you not, will you not judge them? <laughs> this enemy coming after us? Those are rhetorical questions. He's trusting God to do this. Amen? He's trusting him to do that. You know, when we're in spiritual warfare, it always takes some participation on our part. <laughs> yeah. And we see the people of God doing that. They're fasting and they're praying. They're seeking the Lord. There's some pain involved sometimes in spiritual warfare. Send Judah first. Send praise first, right? And so that's what they do. Jehoshaphat's prayer started with praise and then with a promise. You promise this land to your people. He reminds him of that. He rehearsed God's promise. <laughs> More for his benefit than God's, I'm sure. But I think God likes to know we remember his promises, right? to help them, to give them the land they were on. And then he confesses something to God. We're so quick to say, I got it, I got it. Don't worry, I got this. Lord, we need your help. <laughs> he confesses that he is his own weakness, his own ability to face the enemy. He confesses that he didn't even know what to do. Just like we many times don't know what to do. But he was looking to God for help. Church, we need to look to God for help. He is the only one who can help us. <laughs> Somebody said that this prayer reminded himself and the people there how big God was. <laughs> Amen? And that they were God's people. <laughs> We need to remind ourselves that, who we are in Christ. I'm a new creation, amen? I'm victorious, amen? I'm a, a co-heir with Jesus, amen? Yes. We need to remind ourselves of who God is, how big God is, and that he's our God and we're his people. I'm my beloved and he is mine, Amen? We need to remind ourselves that. You've been there. I've been there. I'm there quite often. <laughs> Lord, I'm just a woman. Lord, I don't know what you're doing here. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. But I need you, right? We need him. The Bible says when we call, he will answer. Amen? He will answer. Romans 8, 28, for God works all things together for good for those who love him, for those who are called according to his purpose. Philippians 4, 13, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Amen. We need to remind ourselves of who God is. Remind, stand upon the word of the Lord. And that's what we see Jehoshaphat does right here in this chapter and the people of Judah and Jerusalem there. We see the word of the Lord in verse 13. And all the men of Judah with their wives and children and little ones. See, we're supposed to bring them to church. Right? He stood there before the Lord, and when the Spirit of the Lord came on Jehazel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaiah, the son of Jael, the son of Mattiah, a Levite, <laughs> the descendant of Asa, as he stood in the assembly. 
he said, listen, Jehoshaphat, and all who live in Jerusalem, this is what the Lord says to you. I like that because his people were there at his house. They were there in his temple, and they hear the word of the Lord. Amen? And it gives them encouragement. Here's what he said. Do not be afraid or discouraged because of this vast army. <laughs> I love this. For the battle is not yours, but God's. <laughs> Tomorrow, march down against them. Here's the instruction. They will be climbing up by the pass of Ziz, and you will find them at the end of the gorge in the desert of Jeru. I love that. God knows where they're going to be tomorrow. <laughs> Just like he knows where we're going to be tomorrow. You will, have, you will not have to fight this battle. Wait a minute. <laughs> he told us to march, but then he says, you're not going to have to fight. Take up your positions, stand firm, and see the deliverance the Lord will give you, Judah and Jerusalem. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Go out to face them tomorrow, for the Lord will be with you. Amen. Amen. I like that battle plan. <laughs> First of all, he says, don't be afraid. <laughs> don't be afraid. Church, if you feel God moving you to speak, don't be afraid to speak the truth. The gifts of the Holy Spirit, prophecy, a word of knowledge, a word of wisdom, remember they're gifts to the church. Remember that prophecy isn't always telling the future. Sometimes it's reminding us of what the word of God says. And the word of God is always supreme. If you hear a prophecy or a knowledge or wisdom and it doesn't line up, then guess which one is wrong? The human element, right? But we should not dampen or put out the Spirit's fire. And so we see here they've gathered for prayer, they're fasting, they're praying, and a prophet of the Lord stands up and he has a word from the Lord instructions, encouragement for them. Amen? Oh, how we need that. God still speaks today. He still does that today. We see it in 1 Corinthians 12 through 14. We see that there, how God raises up, how God gifts the gifts of the Holy Spirit, and they're meant to build up the church. So first, the thing that's so important here is they hear the word of the Lord. They hear the word of the Lord. They listen to what God says. <laughs> if you're in a relationship with the Lord, you need to remind yourself that he's for you and not against you. Amen? <laughs> it's important that we do the word of the Lord and not be just hearers only, deceiving ourselves, Scripture says, but that we're hearers and doers of the word. Be sure that it lines up. Every prophecy, every word has to line up with the scriptures. But don't be afraid. God's word to Judah was don't be afraid. <laughs> don't be afraid. This battle isn't yours. <laughs> I wonder if the knees stopped knocking then. <laughs> it's not your battle. It's God's battle. Amen. Amen. We can say that to ourselves today, right? We don't fight against flesh and blood, but principalities in dark places that come against us, right? But it is God's battle. It's not ours. We might feel like we're on the front line, but it's God who's going to fight this battle. Don't be afraid. It's not our battle. <laughs> Take your position. Stand still. <laughs> We see in the New Testament, having done all to stand. Having done all that we can, stand. Stand in faith to see the deliverance of our God. Amen? Watch the Lord's victory. He is with you. He says, go get them, and then stand still and watch. Go get them, because you'll want a front row seat for what happens next. Amen? God is with us. Then we see a response to the word of the Lord. 
Verse 18, he says, Jehoshaphat bowed down with his face to the ground, and all the people of Judah and Jerusalem fell down in worship before the Lord. Then some Levites from the Kohenites and the Korahites stood up and praised the Lord, the God of Israel, with a very loud voice. <laughs> Sometimes we Pentecostals get accused of being loud. But if you can't hear me now, we'll say a little louder. There is something about being loud. And we see that heaven is going to be loud. The voice of God is loud, like many rushing waters. <laughs> Have you ever stood by a tall waterfall? It's hard to hear. <laughs> right? But God is with us. Amen. So we see that how God is so big there. Verse, I don't know if I finished. I'm sorry I got excited. <laughs> With a very loud voice. Early in the morning, verse 20, they left for the desert of Tekoa. As they set out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, listen to me, Judah and people of Jerusalem, have faith in the Lord your God and you will be upheld. Have faith in his prophets, and you will be successful. After consulting the people, Jehoshaphat appointed men to sing to the Lord and to praise him for the splendor of his holiness as they went out at the head of the army, saying, Give thanks to the Lord, for his love endures forever. Let's say that. Give thanks to the Lord, for his love endures forever. He said, I need the worship team up front. <laughs> we need the worship team up front, right? And we're going to go into, we're going to march out to meet the enemy. Whew. Worship, worship, praise. When we worship him, we remember how big God is. <laughs> and somehow we, it causes us to remember how small we are. <laughs> yeah. They began to praise the Lord with a loud shout, with a victory shout, amen? Shouting praise was done in the battlefield, right? Shouting, a battle cry. Here we are, the people of God, amen? Sent the worship team first. Something happens there on a spiritual level when we shout out to God. <laughs> Something happens. God promised them victory, and it was as good as done. It was as good as done. As they marched out that next morning, <laughs> the king Jehoshaphat called the people to believe in God. He stirred up their faith in God. Amen? If you believe in God, we, have, we can stand our ground against the enemy. He put the singers in front there and they sang their praise. They sang their praise. We sang this morning, Shout to the Lord, All the Earth. <laughs> Written by Darlene Check from Australia. She came and she was singing jingles, you know, for Diet Coke and McDonald's and KFC. Did you know that? That's how she started. Her husband had a small shop for motorcycle parts. <laughs> they had a couple small kids and, and you know, it was a struggle. What were they going to do? What were they going to do? And how is this going to work? And... She said, I learned that we'll never find hope in looking at our circumstances. <laughs> yeah. It's only found by fixing our eyes on Jesus. Amen. Who doesn't change and who is always faithful to meet each need and make a way. Amen. So instead of letting fear control us, our response to the threat of the enemy is to seek God and pray. Seek him and pray. Right? 
praise him with all we've got. Believe him. Now realize they're worshiping, they're praising, and the, they haven't met the enemy yet. <laughs> they're on their way. And they're worshiping and they're praising him as if the victory had already come. Because they believed in him who is faithful. He who cannot lie. They believed in him. They believed the word. We need to believe the word the Lord speaks to us. In his word, by his Holy Spirit, by his people in, that he's brought in our lives. Speaking the truth of the word. <laughs> Test every word. And give him the glory. Amen. We see the victory in verse 22. As they began to sing and praise, the Lord set ambushes against the men of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir. Who were invading Judah and they were defeated. The Ammonites, the Moabites, rose up against the men from Mount Seir to destroy and annihilate them. After they finished slaughtering the men of Seir, they helped to destroy one another. <laughs> That's our God. When the men of Judah came to the place that overlooks the desert and looked toward the vast army, they saw only dead bodies lying on the ground no one had escaped so jehoshaphat and his men went to carry off their plunder and they found among them a great amount of equipment and clothing and also articles of value more than they could take away there was so much plunder that it took three days to collect it come against god's people will you <laughs> Wow. What was God's word? You will not even need to fight. He said, take your positions and stand still and watch the Lord's victory. He is with you. We can expect victory when we call on the name of the Lord and then do it his way. We don't just call on him and then go about our own business. <laughs> we have to follow his way, his plan. If we think we can do it on our own, we are very much mistaken. <laughs> yes. If we think we have a better idea than God, we're mistaken. <laughs> we'll miss the blessing that he has because of our own arrogance. Judah didn't claim credit for the victory. Not at all. But they again worship the Lord, right? Because their faith has become sight, amen? They praised and they thanked the Lord as we can. We see the celebration here take place in verse 26. On the fourth day, after they got all the plunder, in the valley of Barakka, where they praised the Lord. This is why it's called the Valley of Barakah to this day. Barakah means blessing, the Valley of Blessing, right? Then, led by Jehoshaphat, all the men of Judah and Jerusalem returned joyfully to Jerusalem, for the Lord had given them cause to rejoice over their enemies. They entered Jerusalem and went to the temple of the Lord with harps and lyres and trumpets. The fear of God came on all the surrounding kingdoms when they heard how the Lord had fought against the enemies of Israel. And the kingdom of Jehoshaphat was at peace, for God had given him rest on every side. Now, lest you think it's called the Valley of Blessing because of their three days collecting the plunder, taking up the offering. Can you imagine, ushers, if you had to just keep collecting for three days because God was just blessing and blessing? <laughs> it's not called that for that reason. It's called the Valley of Blessing because his people blessed the Lord in that place. They returned to bless 
the Lord and give him thanks. God is blessed by our prayers, our worship, our faith, our trust in him, our obedience, our lifestyle, our praise to him. He's blessed. He's blessed. God can turn your pit of despair into a valley of blessing. Amen? A valley of blessing. As I've listened to those of you who have, were down and out with COVID, you each told me, I felt God's presence. I felt the prayers of my brothers and sisters. I realized we're not in this alone. We're reaching out. I, God spoke to me. God changed me. God revived me because we cried out to him. We got to trust in him. We got to do life his way. He'll bring the victory. The battle's not ours. It's the Lord's. The battle is the Lord. When we cry out to him for help, he will respond. <laughs> he will respond and give us his word to go on. He'll give us his instruction. He'll lead us. We see that the Lord fights battles that we could never win on our own. Having done all to stand, relationships can be healed. Amen? Amen. Bondages, addictions can be broken. Amen? Families can be reunited. Wounds of the past can finally be healed and whole. When the enemy advances, we pray. We pray. And when the Lord speaks, we obey. <laughs> It's that simple. We cry out to the Lord. And then when we hear what the war Lord says to us, we obey it. Stand still and see. The battle belongs to the Lord. Amen. He'll show you who he is. <laughs> he will show you who he is and that he is bigger than any problem that we face. Bigger than any problem problem. The battle belongs to the Lord. Amen. Amen. Stand with me as we close in prayer. If you need prayer for healing today, come on up. <laughs> we'll anoint you with oil according to the scriptures. Amen. And the prayer of faith will raise you up, the Bible says. Amen. Father, we thank you and we praise you, Lord. Oh, we praise you, Lord, for the victories we've seen. Lord, for the victories we're in the midst of, Lord. We don't see the end, but Lord, we give you praise because we believe in you, Lord. We believe in your power. We believe in your majesty, Lord. We give you the glory. Thank you for reminding us today that the battle isn't ours. It's yours. <laughs> Lord, the battle belongs to the Lord. Lord, we will trust you. We will obey your word, Lord, and we will stand and see the victory that comes through your name, Lord Jesus. Oh, God, we pray your hand upon us, each and every one. Lord, that you would draw us close, that you would build us up in our most holy faith, God, that we might live and walk in newness of life, that we might be ready for your coming, that we might be spreading the word, Lord that you're coming. <laughs> I pray, Lord, have your will in our hearts and in our lives and in this church, we pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. The battle belongs to the Lord. Amen. Amen. God bless you. <laughs>